Hello, RotoForge community. Uh, Michael here, and Sam behind the camera. <laughs> so, we've had some success recently? And we found a, f a new window for deposition uh, using an entirely new sort of scheme of extruder and motor layout on the printer, uh, where we switched to using a larger die internal diameter, uh, 1.45 millimeters instead of 0.9 or 0.8 millimeters. We're using the larger die diameter because it seems to reduce the amount of hot shortness, basically the tendency of material to expand and clog the interior of the motor shaft. And we're, we switched over to this larger die diameter because it seems easier to get high flow rates through the die and have it travel reliably, have the material continuously flow out of the die under modest pressures that we can supply with off-the-shelf extruders like the Hamera from E3D. Uh, we're using an aluminum 1100 wire for most of our testing because we've had some success with it in the past. It's a relatively soft alloy of aluminum and it's cheap and easily available in a wide variety of wire diameters. Uh, another major change since our last update when we talked about the wonders of metallurgy with the titanium, zirconium, molybdenum alloy um, is we switched from using TZM to using H13 tool steel which is a type of tool steel that's very hard and it's famous for its ability to work with hot, other hot metals but it contains a large amount of molybdenum and chromium and is substantially easier to machine than TZM and much, much cheaper. <coughs> a factor of five or six times cheaper to buy from McMaster or some other place. Uh, 
So it's, it's been a real boon in terms of our ability to machine the parts to find tolerances quickly without wearing out our tooling. Um, and it's, it's proving to be very durable in use. Uh, it's proving to really hold up quite well to rigorous testing at high flow rates and under high applied forces. Uh, <clears throat> we've also decided to upgrade our die motor. We went from a Zing 2207, 1800 kV, to a 2608.5, no, 2806.5 at 1800 kV, which has about 50% more torque at any given RPM up to 30,000 RPM. And it's made a lot of difference in terms of keeping the RPM during extrusion stable, which turns out to be really important because variations in extrusion RPM, or RPM during extrusion, creates variations in temperature, variations in temperature cause variations in pressure, and variations in pressure cause kinking, jamming, hot shortness, and general instability they are all kind of undesirable. We've been fighting with that for a while. So just generally more motor power on the die motor has been really helpful, and uh, has gone a long way towards making the whole system a lot more stable. <clears throat> we have also been collecting some really nice thermal camera data, which I'll put up right here. Uh, it has taught us some interesting things. We've gotten some intuition for some elements of the system we didn't have before. In particular, it indicates that it is possible to release most of the heat of work, of plastic work of the metal as it flows through the die, into the material as it flows out of the die, as it extrudes, into the extrudate. Um, and basically it means that the extrudate can carry the heat of the plastic work and the heat of friction away from the region of interaction with the die inside the die to the outside of the die and you can essentially lose that heat to the build plate or to the build part as you go along. Which is helpful because it means that there is a loss path that we can control if we just get the right feed and speed and we know the thermal conductivity of the surface we're printing on. <clears throat> of course, this complicates things because when you actually do go to print on the build plate, you end up in a situation where the material freezes much more quickly and a lot of the heat is lost to the build plate so your material isn't as hot inside the die, and so extrusion pressure increases. So getting the right feeds and speeds in the build plate are fundamentally different from getting the right feeds and speeds when just floating in the air, as our recent tests have mostly been. So this, of course, introduces all kinds of new ways to jam, not the only of which are getting too cold due to heat loss to the build plate, but also being on the build plate introduces viscous drag forces inside the extrudate, and this viscous drag can apparently transfer through the plasticized material in the die if the cross section is large enough, and this destabilizes the plastic pool, if you like, the region of plasticized material. It causes it to sort of wobble back and forth, and this introduces kinks in the wire and a whole bunch of other weird behaviors. So we're working on getting over that by getting the right feeds and speeds and doing a few of our future prospects, one of the most important of which will be shrinking the wire diameter from 1.6 millimeters OD to 1.2 or even 1 millimeter OD, maybe 0.6 or 0.8. We've had some good suggestions by Junkers and a few other people in the Discord on that. Uh, if we can figure out a way to handle wire that small, we'll definitely want to work with it. But for now, we might just be stepping down into an intermediate step, which represents about a halving in the cross-sectional area. And this means uh, the cross-sectional area of the wire, which means that for a given die size, a given extrusion ratio, our pressure should be about double at the same extrusion force, assuming that the wire can be pushed with an equal amount of force to the larger size, or the small wire can be pushed with equal force to the larger size wire. Uh, in addition to moving to the smaller wire diameter, we're probably going to be moving to a more powerful extruder if the smaller wire diameter doesn't prove to be sufficient. This would probably include a 100 to 1 gear motor, like this one. Uh, something that's cheaply found on Amazon, and probably stepping up to an even more powerful die motor, a uh, Zing 2814 1100 kV motor, as has been suggested by some people in the O-Drive Discord and a few other places as well, uh, giving us maybe another doubling in the torque and total power capabilities of the die motor, which should hopefully make things even more stable and easier to control when we, as we move into doing more extensive experiments and trying to find the right feeds and speeds for printing. 3D objects, that is. Uh, of course, th this uh, smaller wire diameter, higher extrusion force and all that also helps us in other ways. It gives us lower energy demand overall, which means that we should have relatively continuous material flow, 
We should have higher die pressures, again, relatively continuous material flow, and less sort of material force transfer from printing material on the build plate. It should reduce some of that instability from drag. And we're hoping that we'll see lower heats evolve, so the total temperature in the die and the motor stays low, is managed well. Um, and there's quite a few other possibilities. The specific physics are a little too much to go into in a single video. And I'll put more details about that on the blog and maybe on the Discord going forward. Uh, I publish all the data I collect as I collect it on the Discord and on the blog, as well as on the GitHub, periodically, about once a month. So if you want to follow us uh, and get more of the physics details, follow our blog here in the description below. And if you want to get in touch with us directly and have more conversations, uh, drop something in the comments or come visit us directly on the Rotofork Discord. We'd love to have you. Uh, and if you have the scratch and you want to support this project, it's real expensive to buy all these parts and run all these tests and spend all this time making all these failures <laughs> on the way there. Um, so I'll put a link to the PayPal and a donor box in the description if you want to contribute financially or otherwise provide some support for the project. Uh, thanks a lot and have a great day.